Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. I'm Katie. I'm alcoholic. Hi, Katie. <coughs> we love you, Katie. Lots, lots, lots. How much? And a whole Um, I want to thank Latham for asking me to be on this panel. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. When I first heard what it was about, I was like, say what? I don't, I don't know. Like, I had to, I had to really think about it because, um, you do hear a lot in the rooms. Um, for me, at least in my experience, I've heard a lot of people tell me, I am the future of Alcoholics Anonymous because I am young. Um, but I thought I would share my experience with my first meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous because I believe it has a lot to do with this particular topic. Um, I first came to a meeting in Alcoxon when I was 16 years old, and I went to a meeting that was close by my house, and there was not one person there that was even remotely close to my age. Um, Most people were old enough to probably be my grandparents, um, and I was very uncomfortable because of that. I felt immediately, like, self-conscious, like, oh, my God, you know, like, am I supposed to be here? Are they, you know, being judgmental of me? Am I too young for this? What, you know, all of the normal thoughts that I think any young person would, or even any member of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, for that matter, we all come in and kind of have that question in our mind, are we supposed to be here? And with that question being in my mind, it was answered by the love and the open-heartedness of those people in that meeting by telling me, yes, I am supposed to be here. And, um, after I went to that meeting, I, I continued to come for about a week or so, and I decided that Alcoholics Anonymous wasn't for me, and, um, I went back out for another two and a half years, and that was not a result of anything that happened in my experience there, I just, it wasn't my time. And so I came back to that exact same meeting to pick up my white ship when I was 18 years old, and I've been sober since then. By the way, I forgot to say, my sobriety date is March 21st, 2010. Um, and again, it was the same effect for me. Um, everyone was just so loving and kind and treated me just like any other person who came in the room. You know, um, I think Chase said earlier, somebody did that. They're going to pet me and be like, Oh, how cute. You know, like it wasn't that type of experience at all for me. You know, um, they just came up to me like they would any other newcomer. They treated me genuinely like a member of Alcoholics Anonymous, like they would any other newcomer, just, um, you know, opening up their their hearts and telling me their stories and, you know, pointing me in the right direction. And I really needed that because I was, I was afraid, you know. Um, I was listening to people talking in those meetings, and I was like, oh, my God, you know, like they lost houses, families, cars, you know a lot of materialistic items and things that I thought qualified an alcoholic. You know, I thought there were qualifications to be an alcoholic and, you know, you had to be under a bridge or whatever sort of picture I drew for myself, you know, and I just wasn't there yet. But they assured me that I had, you know, reached what I considered was my bottom, which is different for everyone, and that I it was available for me just as much as it was someone who was double, triple my age at the time. And um, I think that that's something that's very important. And what I really wanted to um, primarily talk about is that um, I am a young person, but that doesn't mean that I am treated any differently in these rooms. I don't work different steps. I don't practice different principles. I don't have a special sponsor. You know, I don't go to special meetings. Yes, I go to meetings where there are young people sometimes. But I still am a member of Alcoholics Anonymous just like anybody else is. And um, I still do all of the things that every member of Alcoholics Anonymous has done and or should do, either way you look at it. And um, I know that there there have been times where I have experienced some old-timers coming up to me and saying, I've spilled more alcohol than you've ever drank. And yes, it happens, you know, like, (laughs) we can't stop that from happening, you know, sadly. I hope one day we can. But um, we were talking about it earlier, like, that can kill somebody. 
And sadly, that is the truth. And I think that if I was not welcomed the way that I was in those rooms, even if I wasn't the age that I was and someone had said any sort of comment to belittle where I was at and or make me feel like I wasn't supposed to be in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous for any reason because I have a funny nose or my hair color is brown, you know, like I wouldn't have come back. I really wouldn't have. And. Thankfully and luckily, there were so many more people to balance out that particular experience for me that I didn't go back out and that I realized that, you know, maybe that person just feels that way and that's okay, you know. You're entitled to your opinion. Do I agree? No, I don't. Um, do I think that I am the future of Alcoholics Anonymous? No, because I'm a part of Alcoholics Anonymous right now. I am doing just as much as any other member of Alcoholics Anonymous is doing right now, you know, for me. Um, I know service work was the first thing that popped into my head when I heard this particular topic, thinking along the lines of, I know just as any member of Alcoholics Anonymous, service is scary to me. I'm like, what is this? You know, like, I don't understand. <coughs> Committees, bids? <laughs> Why pause? What is that? I can't even pronounce Alki. What? You know, like, <laughs> I don't know, you know, like, and um, that was a big fear for me coming into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous being like, oh, what do I, what am I supposed to do? Like, what's a group conscience? How does this work? What are the bigger, what's the bigger picture? You know, once I was past the point of um, taking care of myself and having some time under my belt and um, helping the newcomer doing those particular things, it was time for me to make the next, the next, I guess, take the next step. And um, I wanted to find out more about service. And it's like the people who spoke before me's experience, I think it's different for everyone, but it really did start for me in um, a group conscience, you know. Um, I think it's just... Service for me was one of those things where I did actually feel not that I had to be a particular age, but that I had to have a particular amount of time to, you know, be a good member of whatever group and do the right thing and do this, that, and the other. And I found that when I joined a home group, that wasn't the case at all. That I, as a member of Alcox Anonymous, with 30 days, three mm. years, whatever it may be, can do just as much as anybody who's, you know, got 70 years of sobriety. Um, and that was important for me to find as well, is that I could participate in um, a group setting. I could participate in Alcoholics Anonymous, and I was just as valuable a member as somebody with oh, a substantial amount of time. And um, I did feel, you know, sometimes that, you know, I didn't have enough wisdom or I didn't have enough this, you know. I, I've i never, you know, they would refer to it as a business meeting, and I was like, I've never been in a business meeting before I worked at Jersey Mike's you know like I don't know these things like am I supposed to have some sort of you know accounting experience do I need to bring a resume you know like I really didn't understand service at all when I first came in here and um luckily I've met a lot of people during my period of time being um, sober that have participated in service and can really give guidance on that particular topic um so I found that I can participate in that no matter what age I am, no matter how much time I have, no matter what my circumstances are. There are no requirements except depending on your group or what sort of um, service position you are looking to be in. But I can always be talking to a newcomer. I always have something to offer that person who has 24 hours sober if I have two days sober because I have a day more than them. I have an hour more, a minute more than them. I have more experience than them at that moment in time, just that little bit, how did you do it, you know, I've heard that asked to me like a million times, how did you do it, and I think that that one phrase in particular is what constitutes any member in sobriety, or any member of Alcoholics Anonymous, is just, if someone's asking you how you've done it, you know, clearly you're doing something right, um, so service was a big, a big thing that came to my mind when I heard that and just in general saying like um we were talking about that earlier too like I have recently started a meeting you know I just started a meeting at my clubhouse because that was how I felt service was calling me you know I believe that service is a part of everyone's recovery and it should be but 
you know, I didn't know how it looked for me, you know, like DCM. I didn't even know what that stood for. Like, what's assembly? I was running around with Jessica, like, with my eyes this big. Like, I have no idea what's going on, you know. Um, there were a lot of things that I didn't understand about service and a lot of things that I didn't, I didn't know where I fit into that as a young person, as a member of Alcoholics Anonymous, as, in general, me. I just didn't know where I fit into service. And so I started a meeting, and that was the first thing that I've done, and now it's just sparked this whole new sort of um, journey in my in my sobriety of where I want to go with it. But um, being involved in service work and not letting that whole idea that I'm too young to do this has been a big part of my sobriety because if I was viewing it that way or people were telling me that on a regular basis and I was learning that early on in my sobriety that I couldn't participate in certain parts of this particular fellowship because of my age or I had to be doing a particular thing, I would not be here and I would probably be drinking. Um, so I just wanted to share that experience, and so I uh, thank you again for letting me speak, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rashad. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Rashad. We love you, Rashad. Lots and lots and lots. How much? And a whole bunch Cha cha cha. Yeah, I'm Rashad. I'm an alcoholic. Um, my sobriety date is um, April 21st, 2009. I was 22 years old on that day. Um, someone had asked earlier what they could do to attract more young people. And the, the story of kind of how I got started in AA is, is a great example of how that, that works. Um, first of all, the, the, the man who 12-stepped me was a coworker of mine, and he was in his 40s. And we were working together, and he um, explained to me how he used to drink. And it sounded exactly like the way that I drank. And then he managed to kind of slip in there. I haven't drank in 13 years. And so I was just, how did you do that? You know? And so he told me, oh, I went to AA. I'm like, oh, maybe I should try that. <laughs> it, I really wasn't that. It was a little more complicated than that. But just to make the story short, you know what I mean? You're like, you know, okay, so... So I show up at AA, and I'm, you know, and they welcome me. And they welcome me, and that's the most important part of the story. Is that I'm the youngest person at this meeting by 20 years. There are men there who have been sober longer than I've been alive. And I walked in, and they spoke to me like an adult. They made no reference to age, none whatsoever. They treated me exactly the same way as they treated any other member of their group. And so I didn't know. I didn't know that being young in AA was, you were supposed to feel different, you know? I did not know that there are people elsewhere who are going through this, like, I don't feel like I belong here because of my age. Like, here I, I'm a person who has hit a significant bottom in alcohol, and I'm coming to you for help, and you are treating me with respect and dignity, regardless of age. So these are men that, I mean, they're in their 50s and 60s, and I'm freshly sober, and, I, and I'm young, and I can't sleep. So they're sitting with me and talking to me until 1 o'clock in the morning when they have wives and families, and it's way past their bedtime, you know. And they're showing me how to be, you know, they're the, like the 
only positive male role models that I've ever had in my life, you know, up to that point. I mean, they're crusty old alcoholics, but by God, that is the best male role model that I've had in my life. So, <laughs> this this was how I spent like the first couple of months in AA. My sponsor at the time had about 30 years sober, and he was in his 60s. Um, and I knew that there was another meeting about 10 miles away that was just full of young people, just absolutely just full of young people. It was almost entirely young people, but they weren't staying sober. They weren't. They were doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and they continuously, there was just no sobriety there. So I never really went to that meeting, but I did find out about this other meeting that took place at 10 o'clock at night. And that's like, that's like the middle of the day for me. <laughs> so I was, I was completely into this. And I went to that meeting and it, you know, it was a perfect time of day for me. I started going to this meeting and there were like two or three people there that were in their early twenties, you know, and we really banded together. Okay. It was just like the three or four of us and we would sit out after the meetings until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, just debating AA, you know? <laughs> just de debating just the big book and talking about AA. And we're all, you know, still within our first year of sobriety, but we're gung-ho about it, you know? And, uh, and at this particular club, they'd have marathon meetings on the holidays. So they'd have a meeting every hour on the hour or on the half hour, 24 hours a day for, you know, like three days on Christmas and like all through Thanksgiving weekend and all this stuff. So we would sit there and we would just, we would just stay there. We like lived at this clubhouse, you know? And so, um, you know, at that other meeting about 10 miles away where it was just full of young people and they weren't staying sober, there were a few young people who wanted to stay sober and they kind of figured out like, well, I'm going to start going to that meeting. So we, we drew a couple more young people. And this meeting still is, you know, it's still mostly older folks. You know? But now what we started as like three or four people in their early 20s, and now we're up to about eight or nine. Okay? And we're hanging out all the time. You know, we're going bowling after meetings on Friday nights. Okay? And we're having fun. And we're staying sober. And we're, we have good quality sobriety. And we're starting to sponsor people. You know? And then we start drawing more young people. And then people like Jessica show up who are in high school. So we were a group of about 10 people in their early 20s. And now we're starting to get people who are in their teens or in high school. You know? And we're all serious about recovery. We're serious about the big book. So for me, you know, what started as being lucky enough to come into a group where age was not an issue. You know, because I came in and I wanted help. And I was by far the youngest person there. You know, they welcomed me and they showed me that, they showed me what, what AA was all about. You know? They felt it was their responsibility to do that. That allowed me to stick around long enough to find, you know, like-minded individuals. And AA is all about attraction rather than promotion. I honestly believe that. And I've seen in my own experience that the meetings that focus the most on the big book and the program, they're the ones that tend to grow, you know, and their, their numbers grow, and the mm -hmm. meetings that kind of stray away from that and, and focus more on the problem rather than the solution, like they, it seems like they're, they're the meetings that kind of struggle, that have money issues, you know? Um, so the answer to the question of how to attract young people is get your young people sober. I mean, if you have sober young people... With good quality sobriety, that's the young people who want to stay sober are going to find them, and they're going to attract like-minded people. So, thanks for letting me share.
Oh, that was awesome. I just got a little, whew. All right. Um, so I'm going to come out of the big book on page 33 uh, at the end where it starts talking about young people. It says, several of our crowd, men of 30 or less, had been drinking only a few years, but they found themselves as help as helpless as those who had been drinking 20 years. To be gravely affected, one does not necessarily have to drink a long time, nor take the, uh, the quantities that some of us have. Um, and that has absolutely been true for me. Um, I remember one thing that's kind of funny is I remember when I, uh, was about 16, I've always been hanging out with kind of an older crowd than me. You know, I was one of those people where life kind of hit me hard real young and I had to grow up quick and stuff. Um, and it's funny cause like I wanted so badly to have a fake ID and I was 16 and as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I got a fake ID at 16, I, I would go to the most sordid places hanging out cause that's where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to the darkest, dirtiest, slummiest, most hard, you know, like the adult places, you know what I mean? Like the places where grown up, real grown ups go. Um, and that's, and that's what I did and that's where I hung out. Um. And it's, it's really funny because I, uh, I never thought that young people had much to offer me. I always thought, you know, they're immature, like they're, they're always talking about trifling crap when I've got real stuff going on and you know what I mean? Um, and it's amazing because man, did that switch as soon as I found AA, as, as soon as I found AA, I was like these old farts and they're, you know what I mean? Just a total flip flop on that one, man. And, um, it's, it's amazing because, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful to have gotten sober in a place where the young people in AA was, was very strong. Um, I got sober in, uh, Eugene, Oregon, which is a college town. Um, and I was thousands of miles away from anybody that I had ever known in my whole life, man. Um, I had tried getting sober, um, all kinds of ways, uh, all kinds of ways by myself. Um, and it was the most excruciating experience of my life. Um, being a sober alcoholic without the program of Alcoholics Anonymous is, uh, probably the most pain that I've ever felt. Um, probably the most alienation that I've ever felt. Um, yeah, just one of the scariest things. Um, so one thing that, sorry, drop the pen. Um, one thing that I, uh, I'm, I'm so glad because as soon as I came into, into AA and I, I was like, I knew I needed to get sober. I don't know why, but the way, the, the night after my last drunk, I woke up and there was no, I knew, sorry, I wasn't going to cut it. I knew, um, I knew that I had tried everything I possibly knew to try to get sober. And the only thought that was in my head was I need Alcoholics Anonymous. I need AA. Um, and I showed up. And I started going to meetings and, you know, a sponsor inflicted her sponsorship upon me, which <laughs> thank God for that woman, man. I mean, she didn't, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to go very far in the steps with her. Um, I think maybe because of that infliction attitude, you know, but she, she kept me, you know, she carried me through those first few days and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for, for her reaching out and doing that for me. Um, and, uh, it was, it was really cool for me to, when I started going to meet, I mean, I, my life was, I was still living in a house with four people who still used and drank, um, you know, living in a college town. Like I was, I was, I just, I just knew I didn't know how to do it. Um, and I went to a bunch of meetings and I'm super grateful because as soon as I thought that my life was over, I wasn't going to have any more fun. I was going to ha have to hang out with old farts who, who, you know, bitch and moan all the time about whatever. Um, I, I went to this meeting and I looked around and it was like these, these kids with like, you know, like flat, like just, just kids, like just people like me, like in some kind of transition, you know, either in college or just out of college or some in high school. Um, I remember the previous year, like when things in my life were getting a little unmanageable, I followed fish around the country and like 
a lot of the kids in these meetings just look like fish kids, you know? Like, seriously, like, they just look like lot kids just to say, you know? Um, and, man, like, they open their mouths, and uh, I never, I never would have expected some of the things that came out of these people's mouths to have come out of their mouths. And for me, like, I, like you know, who, who am I going to stay sober with? How am I going to have fun? Well, obviously, other people who had to grow up quick, other people who didn't know what it was like to hang out with people their age, like me, other people who got a fake ID at 16 and went and hung out in the most sordid places, you know, like those are the people that I, that I can stay sober with. Those are the people that I can relate to, and those are the people that I found in these meetings. Um, and, and it was an absolutely revolutionary experience for me to, uh, to recognize that I wasn't alone and that I, uh, that I didn't have to hang out with, with people who were so much older and been through marriages and whatever, like that there were people who, um, who faced some, some pretty, uh, you know, some real shit in their lives at a really young age, the same way that I did. Um, and, and, uh. One thing that's really cool too is that I feel like uh, as a young per as a young member of Alcoholics Anon as a young active member of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, I feel like I, um, along with my peers and other people my age and younger, um, have an opportunity to uh, to help not only the the suffering alcoholic who is active in their in their drinking, um, but to help the old timers who uh, kind of need to get a little fire under their butt. Um, you know what I mean? Like a little, just a little, a little fresh air about this program. Um, you know, the, the same people who, who would said, I mean, when I came in, my mind was, uh, like most alcoholics, uh, totally magnifying, especially when it came to negative things. Um, when somebody told me that they spilled more alcohol than I drank, of course I paid more attention to what that guy said than what this woman was telling me about how great I was doing making it three days in this program. Of course I did. Why? Because I'm an alcoholic. That's what we do. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm just so glad that, uh, I mean, by some miracle I kept coming back, you know, probably this, this, this woman who inflicted her sponsorship on me, like kept me, you know, um, kept me at least long enough to recognize like, whoa, I don't need to be paying attention to that sick guy over there who's trying to make me feel like I'm not a part of. I need to be paying more attention to these people who are actually like carrying me the message in a way that I, I understand, I identify with, and I, and I want more of, um. And so since coming to AA, I'm, uh, I totally experienced, like, I, I was terrified to get a home group. I didn't know that I could show up somewhere at the same time once a week. I didn't know that I could do consistency. Like, I didn't know, my life was so unstable, like, for as long as I can remember. Um, and AA has been the most stable thing in my life since I came here. It's, it's my rock, man. It's the, it's the one thing that I can count on. Uh, that's the same no matter where I go. I, no matter where I go in this world, there's a, a clubhouse or a room in somebody's house or a church or whatever where those steps and those traditions are on the wall. That book is exactly the same, and we talk about what we got, which is alcoholism and the solution to that problem. Um, and it's, um, I, I don't know, man. I just, learning how to, I, you know, I was, like I said, I was so desperate uh, that when people told me to get a home group, I did it despite, like, I didn't, you know, I wasn't convinced that this was going to work for me. I thought for a second there that you guys had to be on something, because if you felt like I did, you had to be taking some, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I'll follow the directions, I'll do these 12 steps, and then, and then Dr. AA is going to come and give me the purple pill that everybody's taking to smile and laugh, you know? <laughs> um, and, and I'm so glad that I did that, because I, this thing that was so foreign to me that I couldn't even believe, uh, was, was possible, uh, just through show, you know, suiting up, showing up one day at a time, sometimes one minute at a time, um, I was able to show myself that I can be a reliable, dependable, responsible member of this program. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful today that, uh, you know, I don't have to manage my life. I'm really grateful that I've got a higher power of my understanding and a, a group of drunks just like me that can help me manage it, because I can't. As soon as I start managing, I'm in big trouble. Um, and it's... Uh, I, you know, I started attending, I moved back to Atlanta, which is where I'm from, when I had about three and a half months of sobriety, um, and I started going to, I didn't have a car, um, and I started going to a meeting that I could get to where I didn't have to wake up at five o'clock in the morning to get there on the bus, you know, um, and I also didn't have to stay up way later and, like, lose sleep to work, so it was like, um, 
it was kind of out of the way, but it made sense for my schedule. Um, and, you know, in plugging back, that's another thing, man, that uh, my experience has shown me in this program is, like, I can tell you that, that my brain wants me to, um, my alcoholism doesn't want me to belong. My alcoholism doesn't want me to be a part of. Um, and I've found that as long, you know, my, my boots were made for walking. Um, and as long as I, as long as I throw myself out there, um, with the intention of ju- just trying to be a part of God usually shows up in a really powerful way. Um, that, that just totally blows my mind. Um, and I, yeah, I found out that my home group wasn't even an official group of AA. Like they, they were, um, they were taking dues and stuff and they were, uh, you know, distributing the, the money to the, to the greater service structure of AA, but we weren't actually like a, a legit group. Um, and so I went about, you know, trying to organize and figure out how we could do that because the recovery that I found in my home group was like, like, this was my home group. Like, this is, you know what I mean? Like, what do you mean we're not participating in AA as a whole? Like that's, you know, we didn't have a GSR or any of that stuff. Um, and so I, uh, I talked to some people, the people who were in charge of like taking the best. And this is another thing is that I found out that, um, at this, at this meeting, the whole, uh, the spirit of rotation thing just never happened. I mean, there was a guy who had been in charge of like the, the treasurer position or what, you know, the unofficial treasurer position. He had been that person and that filled that role in that meeting for so long that nobody even knew. I mean, he was like deathly ill and somebody else was like taking the money to him to go and take care of this. You know, it was a mess, man. Um, and it was so cool because as soon as I started asking the right people, the questions, um, we, we had a group conscience meeting and ended up, re- you know, voting the group conscience voted to register the group. We have a GSR. We're like active, you know, we're totally active today, which is, um, super exciting. Um, and another thing is that I didn't, um, you know, when I got here, I didn't, I couldn't help myself. So for you to think that I might be able to someday help you is a little, asking a little too much of this alcoholic. You know what I mean? Like I was like, yeah, whatever. I, you know, just show me how to get sober and then we'll talk. But, um, and what's so cool to me about, uh, Gicky Paw and the conference structure of young people in AA is that, um, they, I've, I've been compulsively making artwork since I was like four years old. Okay. Um, I, when I got to school, I went to like a magnet art school and like competition was thick, you know? So this thing that I had that was like my perfect little safe zone of like, I'm a really good artist and I can just stay in this bubble. Um, as soon as I got to high school and college, um, I was a small fish in a big pond and I couldn't count on that anymore. And of course my, my drinking took off. I don't know how associated or related to that it was like probably not at all. Like I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was going to take off anyway. Um, but one thing that's so cool is that when I got here, I didn't know what I was going to do with what the gifts that God, you know, that God gave me to use um, and the, the gifts that God gave me today that I know are to be of service to other people, especially other alcoholics. Um, and through the, the, the conferences of young people in AA, um, I've been able to make artwork for, for young people. Like, like I'm the marketing chair for Geeky Paw this year, and, um, and I've been able to, like, design logos and stuff that, like, people really like. And they're, like, extremely uh, refreshing for people to see. And they're, like, so I'm getting this, you know, um, everything that I do in AA helps me, too. Um, and it's been it's been really incredible to get that affirmation from other people that think and act and, and you know, um, behave as, as crazily as I think I do. Um, to appreciate these gifts and to encourage me to use them in a, in a way that, that helps more than just me. Um, it's definitely shown me that I, uh, you know, I have a purpose today and I have, um, I'm, I'm more clear and conscious about what that purpose is. Um, and I just never, I just never even knew that, uh, you know, I feel like I got a new set of eyeballs, uh, to look at and interact with the world with. Um, and, and I, we are a very viable, I mean, we are a force to be reckoned with in AA, man. I, you know, you with, with your, uh, tradition stick. I mean, you know, sure. I, and that's one thing that's so funny too. It's like, um, I, I end up having fun, even though at the time when an old timer is like making fun of me because they've done what I do, I'm doing many, many times before and it didn't work for them. Um, it's, you know, I usually it comes, although my ego might be, I might be a little butthurt at first when they say something to me about it. It usually comes back around where it's like, 
I mean, it's, it's funny, you know, and like, I've, I've learned to be able to laugh at myself and know that this is shared experience. This isn't just mine, you know? Um, and I guess that's all I've got. Thanks. So we're going to answer questions if anybody has any questions. We have one. Um, is it about planting the seed when young people come into our meetings? Um, is it about planting the seeds when young people come to our meetings? I wouldn't say... To me, the definition of planting the seed, in my experience, was, for instance, when I came to my first AA meeting, and I left and went back out for two more years, and that little voice was in the back of my head, like, you know, maybe this is really where you're supposed to be is in AA and that type of a thing. And I don't believe that you have to go back out to have a seed planted in you because I believe I get a seed, a new seed planted in me everywhere I go and through every person I speak to in Alcoholics Anonymous. So I believe that that goes for any member of AA, not just young people. It's not like, you know, I believe that there are no qualifications except for what our third tradition states, and that is a sincere desire to stop drinking. Um, I don't think I need to, you know, have a seed planted in me when I'm 16 years old and then come back two years later, you know, that type of a thing. So, I mean, I guess that's what I would say about that. Thanks. Thank you. I'm just shot. I'm an alcoholic. I've never um, purposefully planted a seed in a young person's um, mind when when I meet them <laughs> and they're and they're like brand new, you know. But I can I can honestly say this. I mean, I've come in contact with young men who are 16 years old, even 15 years old. And as an aside, like I really hope newcomers never get any younger than that because it's gonna be really sad when the newcomers are 10 years old because they do see keep you know they do seem to keep getting younger. But um, I do I. You know, I talk to young men who are 15 or 16 years old, and um, and I do what the men did for me when I was brand new. You know, I tell them how I drank, and then what happened and what I did, and what my life is like now, you know, and that's what, what I do. And if they can't relate to that, or don't relate to that, it's beyond my control. Um... And a lot of them don't stick around. You know, that's just the, the, the fact of the matter. And they may or may not come back, you know. But I was taught that that's, that's what I do. You know, when I come in contact with a new person, I share my experience and my strength and my hope with them, you know. And... um I've never purposefully been like, all right, you know, when you're ready, you know where to come, you know, <laughs> like that's not my intention, but you know, that, that kind of does happen sometimes the way, the way it is now. I mean, a lot of young people are forced in here when they really don't want to be. So my intention has never been to plant a seed, but do want to let people know that we're always here for anybody who wants us. I'm an alcohol and alcoholic. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, I, at my home group, there's this reading that happens uh, before we do a meeting. It says that Bill Wilson said that freedom from alcohol through the teaching and practice of AA's 12 steps is the sole purpose of a group. Um, and so the group, to me, is to share experience and, and practice of AA's 12 steps, um, to share that with the newcomer. Um, I, uh, you know, when I, when I came to the program, I was, I, I mean, I don't know how more ready I could be. I, like I said, I tried everything I possibly could. Um, and, and what's really awesome is that, uh, as soon as I got into the program and like stayed a couple days and my head kind of cleared a little bit, uh, I, I began having all of these flashbacks of, of people out there in the real world, whether it was in a shopping line or whatever, at a bolt, whatever, wherever I am doing life, um, 
just people saying things like live and let live and one day at a time and all these little things that we say, like to me, out there in the real world interacting with non-members of AA, that's where seeds are planted, okay? This is this is where sprouted seeds come to grow. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's not, by, by the time people get here, they're pretty dead, you know? I mean, I was, I didn't, this was the last place on the block I wanted to come. Like, I didn't have any other options. I, I was run out. I was a hollow shell of a person who didn't recognize myself and couldn't be honest with anyone I loved or cared about, let alone myself, okay? When I came here, I needed some solution. I didn't need you to say, you know, like, I, I spilled more than you drank or what or whatever. Like, um, you know, the, the group in the meeting is to, is to, to me, to show people how, how to stay sober, you know. Um, we all know the problems that came along with drinking. You know, drinking is, alcohol is a great eraser of, of things, both material and spiritual and relational. Um, and alcohol, alcohol synonymous meetings are where we, where we find and share the solution to our problem. That's all I think. Thank you. Well, we don't have any more questions on here. Do you have a question? Uh, I have. I made one on apology. Yeah. I have a question. I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's related to the topic, but uh, I wanted to just get y'all's opinion on how you felt about uh, how we were talking about young people coming into the or forced into meetings and stuff. How do y'all feel about or or uh, Court card signing and bringing that into a uh, <laughs> meeting. How do y'all feel about doing that in that particular group? Sure, awesome. You're shot an alcoholic. Um, sure. I've you know I've seen incredible success with people who are forced to come in here. Um. I mean, in all honesty, like, I had to get a court sheet signed, you know? Like, I wanted to come in, um, and then I went back out, and then I wanted to come back, and then I had to get a court sheet signed at, at the same time, you know? So, and I've seen people who may have not been, who may have not really wanted to get sober, stick around and stay sober, you know? Um. It's not a case with everybody, you know, but I don't think that, um, I don't, I don't personally think that it's a bad thing. And, and definitely anybody who has a desire to quit drinking, you know, regardless of whether they had that desire when they first showed up or not, should, uh, should definitely be welcome and should definitely be invited to any kind of, uh, YPA event, you know. It's, that's, uh, a, a wonderful way to, um, to get people, you know, it, it, it's it, it just goes back to um, like what I was saying before. It's you know, regardless of why a person's here, or you know, age or ethnicity, or even if they speak English or not, you know, I mean, we're here to help another alcoholic. You know, that's that's my belief. So I know that um. I've seen I've, I've seen meetings that are completely full with people who have to get their court sheets signed, yeah. and they all sit in the back, and they're all on their phones, mm -hmm. and it kind of kills the mood of the meeting sometimes. You know, I've I've seen that, I've seen that, but well, just so that maybe that just that little bit of hope or that seed that that they that something that they just might hear that speaks out into their head mm -hmm. that makes them want to come back when they do go back out. You know, they'll say, hey, I remember when this person, the reason why I'm asking is because uh, if that's something that you're going to vote on as far as being brought into a new meeting that maybe we would have here, would that be something that you would necessarily have to vote on to have in your group or not? Basically, is what I'm saying. It is that appropriate? Because you know you're going to have people that come in there and want their cards signed. But, you know, are you here for the right reason? Or do you see what I'm kind of getting at? I'm Kay Alcock. Um, I think that's a great question, but I think that also brings it back. Um, I mean, our third tradition does state that the only requirement for AA membership is a desire to stop drinking. And um, 
when I came into my first meeting, I don't, I didn't walk up, nobody walked up to me and asked me, are you ready to get sober right here, right now? Because I did not know. I didn't even know the second time around. You know, like, I'm so grateful that I was, but if you had asked me that the first second I had walked up to a meeting and that was a requirement for me to walk through the door and hear the message that y'all brought to me, I would not have been able to get sober. So I do understand, um, but I also like to remember I am, I don't have that authority to say, <laughs> you are allowed to come, but you are not because you're not ready to be sober. Because, I mean, honestly, if somebody had done that for me, I wouldn't be here. You know, I don't know if that's the same for y'all, but I know I wouldn't be here because I was not 100% sure when I first came in. And um, I came in when I was 16, like I said, and I was out of a treatment center, and I was required to go to meetings as well. So it's a similar situation, not necessarily court-ordered, but that was a part of my treatment and that's exactly what it was. It was my treatment. So I kind of view it that way as well. It's a part of their treatment and their, their um, maybe hopefully their journey to sobriety as well. So thank you. Um, in my experience in our meetings, we sign them after the meeting. I, I think, um, yeah, usually we just do it after the meeting. So um, at the end or the chairperson. However, I have been to meetings where they have, had such a large, it's actually a meeting particularly for people who are in the court system, um, and there's literally a stack this big, so they kind of sign them through the meetings, but clearly you have to be there in order to get your sheet signed, so I think that's up to them to be there to get it signed, so. Alex, I'll call it. Yeah. Hey, everybody. They, um, I think that that's a decision that you know, like each group can make the decision whether or not to choose to sign those those court sheets or not. Um, I do know that in open meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, anybody can show up. You don't even have to be an alcoholic. You can, like, know you're not an alcoholic and show up to an open, you know. Um, I think that with, with closed meetings, they tend to, to be a little bit more strict. It's, it's one of those things with the, the court sheets that I know that they have some uh, AA experience that you can look up from, like, uh, GSO or something like that on, like, how most groups handle that situation and what kinds of things have come up in group consciousness about the court sheets. Um, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those things where it's like, uh, I'm... I don't know, like, I don't know what God's doing with people, you know, like, when people, when people show up at an AA meeting, like, who knows what they're going to hear, or what they're supposed to, or what, I don't know who I'm helping and who I'm hurting from what I'm saying, ever, like, I have no idea, so it's just one of those things that's like, okay, like, this is what you need to, you know, you need your court slip sign, like, well, you know, here you go, I hope you come back, you know, if you don't, it's not my job, it's a big, you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> Um, okay, what I'm gathering like, from all this, because um, I think it, some people were confused, and, and I was too. Um, alcohol, big call, what is the other one there? Icky Pop. That is, when people in our hearts and harness gather together to create this sort of this fellowship, but it's that's not a meeting, right? No. So we have our home group, and we'll have this meeting. And then those of us who wish to engage in the service work or play these events or maybe have a barn fire, we'll meet, and, like, we've been meeting every week, and uh, we'll plan our events or, like, how we can reach out. That's what that is, what we will do, how close we all do, right? Yes. I have an analogy. Okay. Okay. So, like, you know you know what an iPhone is, right? Does everybody know what an iPhone is? Okay. So, Apple, the company corporation Apple, right? The iPhone's new. Nobody's ever seen it or heard of it before except for the people who are making it, right? So, Apple has a conference, right? At a hotel, they rent this large space so that they can showcase this new item, this Apple iPhone, to the community, right? And also to introduce the community to the Apple iPhone, okay? So so the the Y pause, the young people in AA conferences, the C pause, C Y P A A, 
is, is a conference that's showcasing young people AA to the community wherever the conference is held, where, where young people in AA go and rent and, you know, they're like the, the, the committee of Apple that's putting on the, the iPhone conference. You know what I'm saying? Where the young people go and rent the space and do the thing and pick the people to do the, you know, whatever and, and choose the events and how they're going to do them and whatever to, to introduce you know, to be of service, of course, and to carry the message to the suffering alcoholics, but also to introduce young people AA to the greater community and to introduce the greater community to young people in AA. That's my understand, like, my three cents on what a conference is. Because stuff- I was so three confused cents. when I got here. I was like, what's a conference? You know what I mean? I wasn't a professional. I'd never been to a conference, you know? Uh-huh. I didn't go and hone my skills at some conference. So that was, yeah. Mm. Anyway. Yes. I think there's been a lot of confusion with some of the, especially some of the old timers in the group that is alcohol, AA, or is it another CA or CMA or NA? Or it's a service, right? right? It's yeah, a service, service committee. committee. So it's like a group of people specifically set up to create the conference, the Georgia conference of young people in AA, or the whatever conference. Does that make sense? So alcohol and Alky Pop, yeah, it's people yes. who live in Alabama, young people or old or whoever, coming to create. You know what I mean? To create like a conference for or by young people in it. Alabama Committee for Young People and Alcoholics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it would just, I would kind of relate it to like if the women of Alcoholics Anonymous decided to do a women's retreat, yeah, or would want to do a conference of like women in sobriety, and yeah. we all went to a hotel and we had, you know. Um, different panels like we're having right now, um, things, some may be, you know, catered to maybe a particular womanly problem or yeah. not, but it's all AA related, just like service, all that type of stuff. It just, um, I think for me at least, it's um, a place as a young person where I can come meet other young people in Alcoholics Anonymous, see the experience, strength, the hope in that, and also um, just to get to know a lot of people. It's similar to roundups, if anybody's ever been to a roundup. It's the same exact thing, um, just um, put on by young people in Alcoholics Anonymous. But that's not clearly um, not the only people who take part in putting those together and or that participate in it. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.